as a farmer. You believe. You believe in every acre, in every crop, in hard work and commitment. You believe in the future of farming and the vast opportunities that lie ahead. And you believe in the yields of tomorrow and providing for our growing planet generation after generation. We believe in you. Most farmers uh, in America have, have bought in to Monsanto's advertising and uh, they believe that this is this is what will keep American agriculture uh, productive uh, but you know we haven't seen the yield gains either in soybeans or in corn that we've been promised and you don't have to take my word for it the United States Department of Agriculture keeps records of, of yields in every production year we used to have a line like this before we got genetically modified plants and now we have lines that do this where we have highs and lows but never never achieve new highs people said well why don't you try it it's easy I'll never forget that it's easy so uh, I started in with uh, GMO soybeans and I was very impressed until I started seeing some weed resistance, especially last year. And I had it documented at the University of Illinois that uh oh, now I've got weed resistance or water hemp resistance uh, to glyphosate. Well, that's my major weed. So now why am I going to go and, and buy extra uh, expensive seed and uh, then it not perform the way it's supposed to. I'm buying something and I'm getting nothing for it. Now, over the years in the time that we've grown Rounded Pretty Soybeans, we've seen uh, an increasing reliance on heavier and heavier applications of chemicals. This year uh, was probably our worst experience uh, because a, a lot of farmers, including us, learned that uh, we weren't going to be able to control a lot of the weeds in our fields with just glyphosate or Roundup alone. And so we were forced to use other chemicals on top of that. And, our, and uh, the, the cost of weed control this year was drastically higher than what we've seen in the past simply because it's taken more trips over the field, more applications of herbicides to control weeds. Alrededor de la escuela se siembra soja transgénica, maíz transgénico, supongo, y se fumiga con glifosato. Eh, ¿De qué manera hay un... de manera terrestre con algo que acá en la Argentina llamamos araña? Eh, y también de manera aérea, con aviones fumigadores. Y lo que yo veía era que no se respetaba que los chicos estuvieran acá en la escuela. Y nos llamó la atención en la escuela cuando hacíamos el examen físico de los niños la cantidad de lesiones dermatológicas que tenían, las lesiones en la piel que tenían los niños. Y mientras estábamos preguntándonos eso, por la puerta de, del colegio había un estudiante de afuera que nos avisa que salgamos y es que estaba pasando a 5 metros de la puerta del aula donde estaban estos niños estudiando y nosotros haciendo nuestros exámenes físicos de esos niños un mosquito fumigador que como toda escuela rural está en el campo y todo alrededor tenía eh, plantaciones de, de soja transgénica, no encontramos ninguna autoridad de aplicación controlando esa aplicación y que la aplicación nos hiciese en situaciones que pusieran en riesgo la salud de las poblaciones, en este caso de niños que van a la escuela 
y que están siendo fumigados en las escuelas junto con sus maestros. El trabajador, el docente, el que todos los días tiene que ganar su pan no tuvo opción, tuvo que aceptarlo. Eh, al político le dio poder, al que tenía que tomar la decisión, al que tiene que controlar la plata de la soja le dio poder ¿Mm? y le sigue dando poder. Entonces cuando a vos algo te da poder y te ayuda a mantenerte en un cargo, no lo vas a controlar, no lo vas a ver. En los chicos que veo, eh, problemas de aprendizaje, alergias, eh, eh, madres que deciden por motus propio ligarse las trompas. Creo que ella eh, es una manera de que su hijo no, ay, perdona, no nazca enfermo. The people out here that are raising questions about the safety and not just the immediate safety, we're all still walking around, but the long-term effects of glyphosate in the soil. If there's something out here that we don't know about, if there's something out here that's not being told us, if we've been lied to, we need to know this stuff. There are a lot of health risks that have been associated over time, different forms of cancers, um, Parkinson's disease, um, for people who live on these farms, work on the farms, the families. So there are a lot of concerns about that, especially for children. And um, you know that has, of course, long-term ramifications, which I think aren't even accounted for uh, many times. The soil suffers. It, it becomes sort of crispy and burnt sometimes. Um, of course, the biodiversity of an area is is reduced because of the, this sort of use. Um, and you know, it just destroys rural communities very slowly. But the, the lack of choice is, really makes it difficult for a lot of farmers. Consolidation means that you have fewer farmers, fewer families there, um, and the infrastructure that depends on those businesses uh, doesn't do as well either. So schools close bit by bit because um, there are just fewer children in the area, in the rural area. Um, all kinds of stores close and you see people moving to towns to try to make a living. I don't see things going back. They've run all your small people out of business. No one's going to get in and start a local hardware store. It's going to be tough to, for a community grocery store to exist. All these small economies of scale are gone and they're not going to come back and uh, uh, there's just, I, I don't see a lot of future for it. We're committed to helping farmers double yields by 2030. With modern advances in breeding and industry leading tools that play an important role in bringing improved performance to your fields. With new innovative biotechnology traits, featuring the most advanced and future pipeline of traits from the Genuity brand, like first-generation drought-tolerant corn and dicamba-tolerant soybeans. Together, we can face the challenges of the next generation and beyond. When the, the issue of seed patents first came out, I think, I, like most farmers, I didn't really understand what the true issues were. And we were anxious to adopt those crops. We thought it was great. But no one really understood or realized exactly the power we were giving up on our own farms by no longer having the choice of whether or not we wanted to use it. Because now, really, we have little, if any, choice about whether or not we want to use this technology. And as it has turned out, why we have granted more power that was once ours to, in, to the hands of a few corporations. And uh, they're exercising that power and becoming very wealthy doing it. The problem that's happened in the last 20 years in, in this country is public dollars for research have dwindled and public universities have taken their dollars from these corporations. Uh, my own state's university, University of Missouri, has a building 
dedicated with the name Monsanto on it. Uh, I thought there ought to be competition in the marketplace so that farmers would have a true cost of production, not an inflated cost of production, that consumers would get a true cost of food in the food chain, not an inflated cost. Uh, because these costs will be passed on into the future, and it will be detrimental into the future to only have one or two uh, sources of seed. Uh, you know, that's a scary thought to th think that one or two companies could be in control of all the seed that we may be able to, be, be able to get in this world into the future. when you allow your crops to be patented, when you allow seeds to be patented, and seeds are just grain, so that you lose control of them on your farm, so that you can no longer use them for whatever they're capable of, but only certain things, then you have to adopt the technology. You have to buy the seed from Monsanto or DuPont or whoever, because you have no choice. Vivir en, el, en medio del corazón sojero transgénico, como es nuestra región, eh, ser las únicas personas en la localidad de que nos volcamos a otra producción, otra alternativa y sobre todo no usar agroquímicos, fue un gran desafío. Eh, la mayor dificultad es eh, hacer valer mis derechos. No, eh, no hay leyes que penalicen al vecino que fumigó eh, no hay solidaridad con los vecinos hacia un productor eh, alternativo como en el caso nuestro. Eh, yo tengo que hacer mi propia zona buffer dentro del campo y perder de cada lado de 200 a 300 metros si quiero que la producción me sirva como orgánico. Eh, de otra manera me serviría solamente como convencional, o sea que ese cereal eh, no habría un sobreprecio. Eh, nunca logré que eh, los vecinos dejaran de, de fumigar, incluso con viento. ¿no? Estas provincias eh, son provincias que han cambiado drásticamente sus modelos productivos hacia, y se han volcado hacia la producción agroindustrial de soja transgénica y esto las hace dependientes económicamente de los resultados de las campañas de cada año y de los ingresos que se generan a partir de las exportaciones de estos granos. Entonces, nos da pena que, que algunos funcionarios políticos no entiendan que en estos tiempos que se viven eh, no podemos seguir creyendo en soluciones mágicas porque pensamos que se está perdiendo la posibilidad histórica de demostrarle al mundo lo que se puede hacer cuando un pueblo se organiza para defender su dignidad, para defender su calidad de vida, a partir de defender sus modos de producción ecológicos, sus modos de producción no contaminantes, sus modos de producción que garanticen alimentos y no sustancias modificadas genéticamente que no alimentan, que no generan trabajo y que claramente lo que hacen es profundizar una separación entre los poquitos que terminan ganando dinero y los muchos que terminan ganando enfermedades. Eh, en ese sentido, en nuestros países eh, ya pueden empezar a decir algunas cosas. Tenemos más cáncer, tenemos más enfermedades, tenemos eh, menos salud, tenemos menos libertad y menos dignidades. Si no tomamos conciencia de lo que está pasando, es tan, tan duro y tan difícil eh, lo que le vamos a dejar a nuestros hijos, no le dejamos independencia de nada. Le vamos a dejar eh, tierras empobrecidas, eh, le vamos a dejar agua envenenada, le vamos a dejar enfermedades incurables. La soja transgénica está usando y envenenando toda la tierra. Y al que esté mirando este video le diría eh, piensen qué independencia económica van a, tener, van a tener si se quedan sin la tierra. Antes de decir en mi país vamos a sembrar soja transgénica, venga y vea que miren lo que, queda, lo que va a quedar de sus campos. The EU has, uh, has, has stood very firm and they still have a chance uh, to retain their independence and to retain their integrity 
They need to stand up now while they have that opportunity. They need to think about the consequences that will happen because sure, starting off, there will be probably Monsanto will give great lip service about we won't on, we will only charge you this much for this. You know, and, but be assured once the, the once the domination is there, they will charge basically what the market will bear. Now, once you let the horse out of the barn, you can't get it back in. If a company is going to promote these products in your country, I, I'd be concerned about letting that in. Just understand that the people that are pushing a certain agenda, they might not have your best interests at heart. If I had the opportunity to, to grow non-genetically modified crops again, like we had 10 years or so ago, that's the technology that we would go back to, the old technology, which is no technology at all. The faith in nature and, and the faith in plant breeders to be able to select plants for their, for their best attributes so that they're the most productive. If I sat down with a European farmer, I'd tell him that if he adopts any genetically modified crops, he is adopting all genetically modified crops. And he is leaving behind any opportunity to grow the old crops ever again. Because once those patents come into your country, everything changes.